one mic. One mic. What's the name of the show? One mic with Big Mike. You know, ain't nobody getting hurt. Ain't nobody. You know, there's no no crime being committed. And they say his style is too urban for the radio. This is real life stuff that's happened to me. Well, you know what? You, you, and you. One mic with Big Mike. I like to be able to do what I want to do. A sports talk show. But no subject matter is off limits. Sneak Mills concert is not called the Hell Yeah, I Bang Chloe Kardashian concert. And now, your host. Put your hands together for the one, the only. Big Mike. Welcome into a Tuesday edition of One Mic with Big Mike. A gloomy Tuesday here in the ATL, man. The sun went out today. But, you know, we made it through. 7 o'clock, somewhere around the world. It's definitely 7 o'clock here. Uh, hope you guys are doing well today. we got a lot, a lot of stuff to get into today. Uh, yesterday, didn't really get a chance to hit a lot of the things I, I wanted to, uh, but did a pretty decent job with the show in and of itself. Once again, this is One Mike with Big Mike. I, of course, am Big Mike, speaking into my one mic. You can hear the show on Spreaker.com, or you can download the Spreaker app and uh, follow the show, the number one, M-I-C, W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. Follow the show on Spreaker, as well as on Twitter and Instagram with that same uh, handle. Share it with your friends. Also, once you follow, follow the show that I do Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. live right here on Spreaker, Go ahead and um, sign up for your free Spreaker account and then click the little thought bubble at the bottom. You guys can click that little thought bubble and jump on in the interactive chat room where you guys can give me your thoughts. You guys can chat amongst each other. Uh, It's pretty fun, you know. Um, Also, make sure you guys follow me and uh, like my page and all that good stuff on Facebook.com backslash O-N-E-M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E, one mic with big mic. Only difference is from the Twitter and the Instagram is instead of just the number one, you spell it, you spell the one out. And the show can also be heard uh, after I'm done doing it live. You can go download it or stream it from Spreaker or you can go to SoundCloud or YouTube and get it as well. So I'm everywhere at all times. You know, if you don't get a chance to to check me out when I'm doing it live, you definitely can share it with your friends and um, download it, stream it. Take it with you, mobily. Is that a word? Mobily? I don't know. In a mobile way. And uh, check me out. Make sure you hit the little heart, too. You know, while you listen, the little, the little like heart. And give me some, some likes as well. All right. To the show. As usual. Oh, let me make sure I tell you guys about this first and foremost. Uh, coming up at 730. One of my favorite guys to interview. Uh, actor, comedian. Guy Torrey, he's a huge uh, Lakers fan, so I wanted to kind of get his perspective from uh, from a fan and, you know, just have some fun, goof around a little bit, get his perspective on uh, the Kobe Bryant retirement, the the direction in which he sees the Los Angeles Angeles Lakers going in, excuse me, Um, and uh, next week, next week on Tuesday, uh, I think I'm going to get a chance to sit down with uh, one of the greatest college point guards definitely of my era one Kenny Anderson on next Tuesday. So uh, that will be a treat and hopefully I can get a um, couple more guests on this week as we move into championship week in college football. Should be a good, good week of a uh, of football this weekend. You got Florida and Alabama right here in my backyard in the ATL uh, for the SEC championship. You got North Carolina, they're taking on uh, Flor- no, excuse me, Clemson in the ACC championship right up the road, a couple of hours away in Charlotte. And uh, what's the, oh, we got the Big Ten championship as well. Michigan State and Iowa. Iowa finally getting a chance to stake their claim. You know, they, they've, their fans felt like they've been disrespected all year. Uh, so that'll go on. I don't even know where that game is being played at. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to act like I know, but I, I do believe it's on a neutral field. And um, so we get, we get three, very solid college football game. I don't know how competitive they're going to be. I know a lot of people are picking the the one upset to be uh, Dabo Sweeney's boys, Clemson, losing to North Carolina. I don't see it happening. Be honest with you, I don't. But whatever. You know, I, I know people are used to Clemson, Clemsoning, and it hadn't happened yet this season. So they're they're, they're looking for it to happen on the on the biggest of stages. 
the one that gets you into the the 14 playoff. And we'll talk about that uh, and what happened last week in college football as well coming up in the show. Also, don't forget, we're going to do uh, on this day, probably not at the at the uh, bottom of the hour like we usually do, because like I said, at 730, we're going to talk to uh, comedian actor Guy Tory. So we'll probably push this to the top of the hour, to uh, the eight o'clock portion of the hour. Um, got some Hawks news. Hawks got a good win last night at the uh, at Phillips Arena. Oh, I was about to call it the Highlight Factory at Phillips Arena uh, against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, started out a little loose as far as the, the the Thunder are concerned. Like the Hawks started pushing it in a little bit, and then of course Russ happened and KD happened, and uh, they made a game of it. it. Came down to the waning seconds, and uh, the Hawks just made you know they made more plays than, than the Oklahoma City Thunder. Very very good win for the Hawks. Young Jeezy was in the building. Um, performing hits from his old albums. I guess he did the I guess he did the new stuff after the game because he performed at halftime and after the game. So he did a lot of the uh, the classic stuff during halftime. So I'm assuming he did the stuff from the new album Church in These Streets uh, after after the game was over with. Um, Georgia Tech <laughs> Georgia Tech made the show today slightly very quick story, but I think it's worth mentioning. Um, especially if you're a Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets fan and you're wondering what direction or, you know, what Paul, what the hell Paul Johnson and the boys are doing over there with your team um, and recruiting and these type of things. Uh, speaking of the college football teams in this, in this town, uh, we've got to give you your Mark Rick, your Mark Rick update once, once we get into the, to the local portion of the show and tell you what's going on with him. You know, is he staying? Is he going? Um, what his plans may be for the future. Uh, and... Uh, we haven't really talked Heisman Trophy winner, oh Hi- winner, Heisman Trophy candidates on this show. So we'll do that now. Now, now that we have it kind of narrowed down to like five or six guys, we can kind of talk more because like talking about this in October and November doesn't really suit my fan. It's too many people. You know, remember Leonard Fournette? You know, and then here's the thing about him too: people are acting like this dude is some sort of bum now <laughs> because he has some bad games. It's kind of hard when your coach is less miles. And I guess they just decided they're not going to recruit quarterbacks. You know, that's not going to be a thing around here at LSU. So the the running back, as great as he is, he's got to suffer. He's got to go through nine to ten, nine man boxes, not ten man boxes. I hate when people say like nebulous things like that. Like, look at this kid. He's getting, there's like five dudes blocking him. That's impossible, first of all. Like Mel Kuyper and these dudes that say that stuff. Like they, 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 they used to say that about, um, Jadavion Jadev- Clowney, you know, he's getting blocked by five dudes, really, and no one else is making plays. Get the hell out of here. A um, couple dudes, some couple coaching changes that I don't think we got the chance to talk about yesterday, but it was one today. Um, guys, I mentioned this to DJ Shockley yesterday when we talked to him. Getting money, you know, when, when your name comes up, when somebody feels like they got a good coach, but your name comes up in another job, that's the cue for your current employer to pony up the money. And hand over some cash. And that's what happened uh, at the University of Houston with, uh, what's his name, Tom Herman? Guy who I called plays at Ohio State last year. And had a, had a good season. Started off real well in the American Conference with with Houston. And uh, I think Georgia was, was uh, looking at him a little bit. And uh, the Cougars, I guess that's what they are, Cougars of Houston was like, nope, not going to happen. So they extended him for a couple of years, probably put a nice little buyout on there. But all that stuff means nothing. You know what I mean? Like if Georgia, if Georgia wants that dude today. Right, bad enough, and he got like a five million, six million dollar buyout. It's bought out, it's done. Uh, I don't think they'll go that route, but I'm just saying, if if it's a team that you know has the the resources and the money to get done what they want done, eh, it'll get done. You know, no questions asked. Um, the NBA keeps rolling on. We didn't talk about Jaleel Okafor yesterday, and we will today. Um, as you know, like I said, we talked with uh Guy Tory about Kobe Bryant, who just coincidentally is going to be playing the 76ers tonight as they are 0 and 18. Haven't won a damn game. And you're almost a, uh you're almost a what am I a quarter away quarter of the way through the season. They hadn't won a game. And on the opposite end of that that coin, the other end of the, the other, other side of that coin, the Golden State Warriors just keep on doing what they're doing. And uh like all I do now is like curse when I see Steph Curry highlights or when I see him do stuff. And I just curse, you know. Like it, it almost like I get mad at this dude, you know. I'm like, ugh, f that dude, you know. 
because the stuff he does, it's almost like I, I think I mentioned this a couple weeks, a couple days ago, maybe. And it's like that movie, and I still can't remember the name of it, but whatever. The movie with Marlon Wayans and Kadeem Hardison, where somebody's helping him, like a spirit or something is on the court helping him because the things he's doing shouldn't be happening. They, they just, they shouldn't, but they do. And I enjoy it, but it just, it's like, damn it, man. Like, all right, you, you think you've seen it all. And yeah, this dude's throwing no look alley oops, hook. Like, it ain't even a regular alley oop. It's like he's going away from the basket, hook shotting the ball back and throwing. Uh, Festus Azili alley oops. It's like, come on, man. Like, stop. Stop the madness. Um, and apparently, <laughs> it pissed some people off in Utah. Yeah, people in Utah got pissed off yesterday. <laughs> and uh, Draymond did the Draymond thing. And we'll, we'll, definitely, <laughs> we'll definitely have that conversation as well. Um, I also want to talk about one of the guys that I like. I, I, don't, like, I don't like his whole game, but I like the way he, the effort he plays with DeAndre Jordan. But yeah, he's getting ridiculous with the free throw thing. Like, man, be a damn pro. Like, come on, let, let's be for real, for real now. It, it's getting to be stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? And meanwhile, Mark, Mark uh, uh, Cuban is just laughing his ass off at what's going on with the Clippers this year. And uh, we'll talk about that. And I have Doc Rivers on my notes because I've been meaning to mention and talk about him a little bit. So hopefully I have time today to bring it up. And um, got some baseball stuff in the news today. How about that? There's baseball stuff in, in, in on my notes today. Nothing big, <laughs> of course, because first of all, it's the off season. But yeah, baseball made 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 the rounds or made the, the notes today. Um, but first, let's start off with what happened last night. I told you guys, don't do this to yourself, right? Monday night football happened last night. The Ravens have no healthy players. I, I think, I think if I check my voicemail, they, they might be a message for me. <laughs> to come try out for the Ravens. It's gotten that bad. Like, everyone is hurt. It's like Elvis Doomerville, C.J. Mosley, and dot, 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 dot. <laughs> you know, there's no, everybody's gone. So anyway, they take on the Browns yesterday, you know, and you know it's bad, too. You know you know everything's bad when the third-string quarterback. This, is, this whole Johnny Manziel thing, and I said this like a year ago, it's approaching. It's, it's really getting into that, to that, that that Tebow realm, you know what I mean? Where you just don't, you don't want it to be there. You know, you just don't, you don't want to deal with it. You know, your third string quarterback is the star of the team. No wonder you're bad as hell. No wonder, like, <laughs> like I was in here, like laughing hard as hell today. Cause I'm, I'm reading for the show and I'm trying to prepare for the show. And I see, um, as I'm scrolling through, I see a couple of articles and I see where, you know, saying Browns fans are doing this. And one, one says Browns fan rips his jersey off. And I see it and I was like, I don't want to see this crap. Because I thought it was, I just felt it was one of those things that they, that somebody's uh, videotaping at their crib, like going crazy, like dudes throwing stuff through, through the flat screens and like doing like r the most ridiculous things possible over a game where you have no control over and you really have. Well, maybe in like some daily fantasy type stuff, no vested interest in. But after I saw the story on on multiple outlets, you know, as I scrolled through, I was like, all right, let me let me see what this is. And boy, am I glad I did not pass that opportunity up. It was hilarious. The one where the dude is like, no, no, no. <laughs> after, well, I guess I got to. I guess I got to um, describe what happened for the people who are like me, who didn't give a damn about the game and didn't, I didn't watch a second of it. You understand me? Not a one iota of it. I was like, whatever happens, I'll turn on my TV tomorrow or I'll turn on my internet, my, my turn on my internet. Cause that's what happens. I'll turn on the computer and I, I'll read and see what happened. Probably very uneventful stuff or something hella stupid, you know? And I'm thinking like something regarding the referees in regards to the referees. No, Cleveland, they browned all over everyone, <laughs> and it stunk. Uh, apparently, their field goal kicker hadn't missed a field goal in ever. He's like got the longest streak to start a career. Cleveland, Cleveland's kicker, the longest streak to start a career without a miss. And he's lining up for a pretty pedestrian field goal to win the ball game. 
is tied up. So, so worst case scenario is he gets his, what well, you would think <laughs> the worst case scenario is, um, he misses the field goal and then they go to overtime and you get, you know, how many more, how many ever more minutes of just bad football. Well, all right. Who cares? Right? No, not if you're a Cleveland Browns fan, you get the field goal blocked. And not only does it get blocked, not one of those things where it gets blocked and, you know, everybody got to get away from the football or whatever, you know, or you, you tackle the guy. No, no, no. It gets blocked and returned <laughs> for a touchdown to win the game. So then these these videos are out because everyone has their camera like on like straight. Like I don't I can never get my camera out that fast to take pictures, video of anything stupid I see. Seriously. Like. I have the app is right there on the main screen, but for whatever reason, I just, I don't know. I'm an idiot. And that's my excuse. I don't know, but I can never catch things. Like I have to be the dude that's like catching a picture of the fat chick in line with an, with an outfit. She doesn't need to be on. And like, she's standing there forever. Then I have to take a picture of her. And it takes, it just takes a while. First of all, cause you got to make sure you don't get seen, you know, especially in my neck of the woods, it could turn violent. Just saying that, um, that, but that along with, well, anyway, everyone got the, the, has the camera on just, it's just armed and ready to go. And they get these videos and this dude is just like, he's like, I'm done. He's, he's like, F the Browns, I'm done, whatever. And it starts, then proceeds to rip Hulk Hogan style, rip the Jersey from his body. <laughs> and he's like he's not even saying anything to anyone he's not uh, he's not he's not yelling and being stupid like someone's trying to stop him i think a woman is trying to stop him but he's just so dejected and hurt and to bring this thing full circle right because the last two weeks we've done a little bit a little falcons monday right because the falcons have lost and it's getting bad it's starting to look crazy around here but what you got to realize is you're not that like people are people right here love to talk about being diehard fans and all that. But you know what's going to happen? That same dude that tore that jersey up, he's going to sew that thing back together like with a shoestring or something. And he'll be right back in those seats next week. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, and here's the other thing. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the, these Cleveland Brown videos. I guess this guy's a comedian, but he's a Cleveland Browns fan as well. And these videos are hilarious. If, you, if you're going to bear with me for like a minute, I want you guys to hear this. It is freaking hilarious. Check this dude out. It's, it's a, it's, this, this didn't happen you know, following last night's game, but it's pretty much the same. If it, if it would have, you, you won't be able to tell other than the fact that he names uh, uh, whatever other team. I think it was the Steelers maybe. You know what I mean? But this could have been, been recorded after last night's game. Hey Browns, Mike Polk, season ticket holder. Killer game in Houston today. <laughs> well, thank God we built you. What a blessing for the community. You are wasting <laughs> valuable space on our majestic shoreline. And what do we get out of it from you? Ten miserable games a year, including two preseason games that I have to pay for and one sh Kenny Chesney oh, concert. Chesney. Do you understand Kenny that it's actually statistically harder for a team to be this consistently bad than it is for them to occasionally accidentally be good? The probability is staggering. <laughs> Did you happen to see that Packers Chargers game today? It's like they're playing a different sport than you are. And here's what you have to understand. We don't even expect you to be good. We just want you to be watchable. Do you have any idea how low our expectations are? We don't expect you to win the Super Bowl. We just want you to look better than a Division Three high school team. <laughs> and listen, I know that there are way more important things in life than football, but you are supposed to be our pleasant distraction from those things. But all we do is pay you money to put us in a bad mood every week. You are a factory of sadness! <laughs> I'll see you Sunday. <laughs> And then at the end, it, you, you know what I'm saying? At the end, it's like, I'll see you guys on Sunday. Yeah. You know, what I mean? those, those, I don't know. I've never been to Cleveland. And for what I understand, I don't want to go. I almost took a job uh, many, many a year back, many, many years back. I almost took a radio job in Youngstown, Ohio. Actually, I was going to take it. I just didn't get, the, I, didn't, I, I didn't get the job. You know, I had like two, three interviews. You know, I had a referral from someone who knew the person that was hiring. And I didn't get the job. And I wasn't like sad or anything because I it wasn't like I didn't have a job. You know, I was just trying to, for whatever reason, I was young and and mobile, 
I was like, let me get out of Atlanta and see what else is there. From what I understand, I understood later, I, that ain't that wasn't the move. Like Youngstown is like a ghost town almost. I think it's, um, I think it's like across a, across a bridge from Pittsburgh. Like if you're from that part of the country, you you know this stuff. But I think it's like a part, uh, 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 like uh, across a bridge or something from Pittsburgh, and it's like a um, it used to be like a big factory town, but then all the factories shut down. And now it's like a haven, like most places that, that that stuff happens. It's a haven for crime and drug use and, and those type of things. And, yeah, I almost ended up there. And I don't know how far it is from Cleveland. I just know it's in Ohio. And hearing that dude <laughs> talking about being a factory of sadness, once again, Falcons fans, at least you're not there. I know Falcons fans have made videos of, you know, the team being bad and those type of things. But here's the thing. You live in Atlanta. Like, you leave the Falcons game, even if it's a 4 o'clock game on a Sunday, you know it's right down the street? Yeah, Magic City. <laughs> yeah. And then you're good. Or, you know, if, if you're of the Caucasian persuasion, you going down to the to the Cheetah. And, you know, psh, all this. And then I even think the Cheetah used to. I, know, I don't know if they still do. They used to. If you came down there with a, chi- with a ticket stub, you got it for free. So, all things considered... You can win even when you lose, is what I'm saying here in Atlanta. But from what I understand about Cleveland, and I've talked to people from Cleveland, like, uh, dude, he's cut my hair. What's from there? It's not really that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I was surprised. I don't know if you guys have heard this story about LeBron's barber, uh, the guy who he got hooked up with in, in, um, in Miami. When he left to go to Cleveland, he brought that dude with him. And I was like, damn, like how much money? Is LeBron James paying this dude to relocate from sunny, naked, half naked women, Miami to Cleveland? Like, I don't even have any other superlatives for it because, like I said, I don't know too much about Cleveland other than what I've heard. And it ain't really the best. You know, it just really ain't the best. That's why those people were so mad when LeBron left and so happy when he came back. Like, I heard, like, him, him leaving and coming back first took so much from the economy and then coming back it was like it was like the lebron stimulus plan you know for like the bars in that downtown area like i we talked to i think on on my former show we talked to a bar owner there and you could hear the hurt and the the disgust in his in his voice in talking to us he was at the point where this is a true story he put what are those things called? urinal cakes Got them made with LeBron James's face on them so that people could pee on LeBron, come to his bar and pee on LeBron. Yeah, it was that serious. So if, you know, if that's indicative of what Cleveland is, yeah, the Browns got to do better. And then somebody reminded me today that it happened against a team that used to be your team that was stolen from you. As I guess they would put it in Cleveland, stolen from you only to win championships <laughs> without you and then come back for this. Oh, God. I, I, I mean, fandom is one thing, and I don't envy it at all because I think fandom makes people do stupid things. But when you're a Cleveland Browns fan, you have some sort, I don't know what kind, but you have some sort of bragging rights over every other fan, except maybe... No, nah, I can't even say that. I was gonna say maybe the maybe Raiders fans, but Raiders fans haven't always been Raiders fans. You understand what I mean? Like the Raiders have kind of skipped around. L.A., Oakland, you know, but Cleveland is just like, damn it, it's Cleveland. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's just it's what it is. Speaking of skipping around from L.A., we got um, from L.A. to Oakland. We've got Guy Tory, comedian, actor Guy Tory, um, coming up here in about five minutes or so. And what I'm going to ask him about, what I definitely want to ask him about, is the fact that he lives in L.A., but he's from St. Louis. And the the prospects of that St. Louis franchise, the Rams, moving again now, because they were the L.A. Rams at one point, moved to St. Louis, and now supposedly heading back to L.A. I want to I wanna ask him how torn he is, or if he's torn at all, that... You know, he's a huge Lakers fan, so he's he's very well entrenched in the culture of uh of of the LA lifestyle or being 
being a, a Los Angelin, I guess that's what it's called. But, you know, home is definitely where the heart is. So for your people, especially if he's got people there, they lose their, their football team. Like, what else is in St. Louis? I mean, the Cardinals are pretty good, the baseball team. But they're, well, I guess in, yeah, they are. They're cheaters. <laughs> this is not Deflategate. These dudes hacked a computer and took proprietary information. So you, there's no, yeah, I was going to say you can't really, but yeah. And they admitted to doing it. So it's not like I'm, I, I got to say allegedly. They, they said they did it. They fired the people who did it for them. So there's that. But it's baseball, so nobody cares. You know, it's not the Patriots, so nobody really. Like, if the Patriots had done that, people would have been calling for the team to be disbanded. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just just eliminate the Patriots from the entire, from, from football in its entirety. But in this case, it's baseball, so no one cares. But basketball-wise, what's the closest thing to St. Louis? Chicago, maybe? The Pacers, maybe? Or, I don't know, the Pistons? I don't know. Where is St. Louis? It's like right there in... uh Missouri. I've been to Missouri before. I've been to, to I've been to Kansas City, Missouri. Or no, I've been through Missouri to Kansas City, Kansas. I think it's one city that's in two uh in two states. It's weird like that. I've I've never it's probably probably some something like that around here in Georgia, because this is country as hell, but I, I've never I've never seen such a thing. One city Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri is one city, but it's separated by the border of the two states. Um, I don't know how I got on, on that. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing that happened last night, before I get off this, this game, uh, Josh McCown apparently out for the season. Yeah. So that means the guy who was your third-string quarterback is at the very, very least now your second string. Now he's your backup. And I'm talking about Johnny Menzel. It's like he probably put a curse or something on Josh McCown. Like, I'm going to show them. I can go out and drink and still play NFL quarterback and party and turn up to future music. Um, and here's what, here's what else they did. What else happened? They, they re-signed Terrell Pryor. And you know what I forgot to look for today? I couldn't remember if he was like, I'm going to show them to the, to the Browns or the Bengals. Because he's been cut by both. Um, Mr. Mr. I, I don't know how to catch. Does anybody remember that? It it really happened. I'm not asking you to confirm it, but it actually happened that when he was in Seattle and uh, they, they asked him something that I've been asking since since the boy got drafted. Every time we talk to somebody from that area, from from the Bay Area, a, a beat writer or somebody like, why the hell isn't, isn't, isn't this dude playing wide receiver or at least learning the position? He's six foot four can run his ass off. He can jump his ass off. He's from he, he's like Mr. Basketball in Ohio. He was coming out of high school, Mr. Basketball. Just be bigger than everybody else. Go to the end zone, turn around, and I'm going to throw it high, and you jump and catch it. And this dude told reporters, I can't catch. Oh, you can't, huh? Until, yeah, we stop throwing checks at you because you can't play quarterback either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that happened. So now he's back in the league, and the, the Browns made it clear. He's back. As a wide receiver, wide receiver, excuse me, and not a uh, not a quarterback. So that is what that is. This is one Mike with Big Mike being heard on Spreaker.com and the Spreaker app for your uh, Windows, your Apple, or any Android device. You guys can go ahead and download that. Follow my show. Sign up for your free Spreaker account. And when I'm broadcasting live Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 p.m., you can click the little thought bubble at the bottom of the screen and uh, join the interactive chat room. Give me your thoughts. Let me know what you think about the content or introduce new content. I don't care. You know, I'll share. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Use the same handle for Spreaker. Twitter and Instagram is the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. And on Facebook.com, you can get me at uh, O-N-E-M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. Now, on the other, on the other side... Uh, the plan is to talk to comedian, actor, Guy Tory. He's a busy man, so uh, we'll see if he's on time. And he's a black man, too. So we'll see if he's on time. He's calling me, so I've got uh, to endure that. We'll be right back. Attention men under the age of 35. You know what really impresses the ladies? 
when a guy has a few drinks and later gets pulled over for buzz driving. That could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. There goes let's grab dinner and a movie. Oh, I know. You drive more carefully when you're buzzed. You've proven that hundreds of times. A woman admires that kind of confidence. And you've practiced how to speak if a cop does pull you over. Slowly, clearly, and politely like, good evening, officer. A woman admires that kind of foresight. And what woman doesn't find it adorable that you call it buzzed even though the law calls it drunk? You could kiss $10,000 goodbye, along with any chance of having a girlfriend. Because nothing says, I'm a catch, more than a guy who lives in his parents' basement and calls it my place. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We asked kids what it took to be a dad. This is what they had to say. A father is always present. I mean, what, father, what real father figure can you have if they're not there? In order to be a good dad, you need to love, love your son. You need to put gas in your car so you don't break down in the middle of nowhere. And you need to make them breakfast. Yep. I mean, just to maybe um, play, like, a board game with me or to just stay home and play um, some video games with me. Just to do, like, that one little thing is what I really look forward to. I'm not asking him to be a perfect dad, but he should try. He's just a constant force in my life. There's no other type of love like a dad's love because it's not comparable to anything else. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. First things first, rest in peace, suck fear. Welcome back to One Mic with Big Mike As I uh, await my guests One uh, guy, Tori um, Look at that, we got him on the line Let's let's pull guy up, man let's, let's turn this music down This is One Mic with Big Mike Being heard on Spreaker.com and the Spreaker app Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram And on Spreaker at the number one M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E Let's go ahead and there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, he is actor, comedian, St. Louis's finest, Mr. Guy <laughs> Tory. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. What's going on, brother? Long time, man. How you doing? I know, man. Long time. You got to have me on more often, man. You're you right. I know my stuff. But look, just the thing, though. Like, we're not doing the same show we were doing. Like, it, it was a tandem show, and now I'm doing my own thing because, you know, they don't let you say nothing. They don't let, they don't let you say what you want to say. When you when you're doing it for the man, you understand? <laughs> so you know, if that's even more reason to have me on, man. You're right, you're right. But I just got this started up this month or last month now, November. So I just got my own thing started up this month, and you know, of course, of course, it got to have Congrats, you on more, man. man. That's, that's, that's dope. Congrats. Th- thank you, man. Thank you. Um, let's start first of all, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you follow Guy Tory on Twitter not, and Instagram at Guy yes. Tory. His Instagram is uh, what's your Instagram, brother? Both the same, G U Y T O R R Y, Guy Tory, you know. And Facebook, Guy Tory Live, right? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Um, this so happened, got you on today. Today is the birthday of one of the greatest to ever, ever, ever do it. Richard Pryor was born on this particular day. Um, Absolutely. You got, any, you got any Richard Pryor stories, man? Any, any inspirational I do, man. stuff? You know, it's funny, man. I have a few Richard Pryor stories, man. The first one is when I first moved to L.A. and started doing stand-up, man, you know, you're trying to learn your way, trying to find your way. You study the great things like that. And Richard, I was on my way to a gig, man, and Richard Pryor said this joke that was so, like, I don't know, exposed himself or left himself so vulnerable that it changed. It was an epiphany for me. He had this joke about this girl was so fine that he would, her daddy's so-and-so, he would, you know, Go down on her daddy, basically. <laughs> Yo. And when he said that, <laughs> when he said that, I, he didn't care if people thought he was, you know, on the other team or whatever. He did that for the sake of a joke, and I was like, man, I got, I got, I got to not be concerned about what people think of me and just go for the joke. And then the other Richard Pryor story, man, is just the fact that 
the most nervous I've ever been on stage. And when he came to see me, man, uh, I did my show at Fat Tuesday at the Comedy Store, and that and and, and Rich and Pride used to come down there a lot, man. And like the first time he came, I was I was nervous, man. And like so many comics, man, thanked me for doing Fat Tuesday because it was a room that fit the urban comics, man, in Hollywood. But we didn't get a chance to really, you know, perform in a lot of those places. They, you know, were a big name, but a lot of them performed for Rich and Pride, man. A couple, a couple of them got called over and said, Richard Pryor said, hey, it's funny. And that made their career. So Richard Pryor, man, was that guy that if he if he, if he called you over and said you were funny, yeah, he made you, he made you good. Wow. Wow. Now, a while ago, it may have been a couple of years now, um, there was a rumor. Well, I guess now it was a rumor because it didn't happen, but that Mike Epps was going to play Richard Pryor in the story of his life, and it never, it never materialized. Um, you're out there in L.A. You know, you, I'm sure you're pretty connected. Have you heard anything about that project? Well, you know, that project would change hands a lot of times, man. It, and, you know, Richard Pryor, I mean, um, David Williams was, was slated to do it at one point, Eddie Murphy. Then they had uh, um, uh, Marlon Wayans. He, was getting, he started doing stand-up. And Marlon Wayans didn't do stand-up. Sean did it, you know, Keenan did it, and, da- and Damon did it. But Marlon wasn't a stand-up until he was told he was going to do the Richard Pryor role, and then uh, he started doing stand-up. Now he's still doing stand-up. Now Mike Epps came into the picture. So Mike Epps was in the picture, then he was out the picture, now he's back in the picture. And I feel, you know, my, I, I, can't, I don't think you can lose either one. I mean, Marlon Wayans is definitely a hell of a, a comedic actor, mm-hmm. and I've seen some his dramatic work, too, so he can definitely pull that off. And Mike Epps is a dark soul, man, and he's funny. He can pull it off, too. So I'm like, man, it's a toss They're both my homies. So it's like, man, you know, even one who can play that role, man, I just want to see it done. I know both of them are doing an incredible job with it, man. So I just want to see it done. Absolutely. And out of my generation of comics, out of my generation of comics, man, this old Def Jam era, you know, Mike Evans is the closest one to Richard Pryor in, far, in, 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 in terms of funniness and darkness and storytelling and just, you know, even the look. So, yeah. you know, either one, you can do the role. I saw a screen test that Marlon Wayans did, and it was incredible. So, you can't lose it either one. Yeah, I, I, I myself have been waiting for that for, for a while, man. I don't know how many people even yeah, know man. that it's supposed to come out, but um, I was very excited when I heard uh, Mike Gibbs was the guy who was slated to do it. Um, let's get back to the comedy stuff in, in a second here because uh, I don't want to run out of time because a lot of people might not know. You're a huge Lakers fan. You may be from St. Louis. Big Lakers fan. You're a huge Lakers fan. And this week, uh, the greatest, the GOAT. Yeah. Well, I'm, let me ask you, is he the greatest Laker? Is Kobe Bryant the, uh, the greatest Magic Laker? Johnson, Magic, Johnson, Magic Johnson will always be the greatest Laker. Well, LA always be Magic Town. We're on the same you know, page. Kobe, yeah. And I say it because the reason why I'm a Lakers fan because of Magic Town. You know what I'm saying? And then you know you, you got you got so many Lakers greats, man. But 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 Magic Johnson is definitely the greatest Laker of all time, man. And and Kobe, what he did for the, for this team, what he did for the franchise, and even the city, man. Along with Shaq, and then when Shaq left, he carried the torch on, man. So you know. Kobe is, 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 up, is up there too, man. But you know, Shaq, Shaq brought in a new era, you know, of winning with the Lakers as well, man. So, I mean, to me, it's a, it's almost a tie between Shaq and Kobe, man. As far as after Magic Johnson, we can't forget the captain, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, he, he's really right after after Magic too, because you know we 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 had to we had to rely on him as well. Talking right now with Guy Tory, comedian and actor. Make sure you guys follow him like I do on Twitter and Instagram. On, at G U Y T O R R Y and on Facebook, yes, Guy Tory Live. Um, we're going to talk to him about his uh, his latest thing, doing it tonight, Apollo Night LA. Am I right? No, no, tonight is Fat Tuesdays, man. Fat, Fat Tuesdays. Tuesdays. going on tonight. It's the night I started 20 years ago, man, to help you know, comedians who weren't you know, previewing to go into the, the, the All Star Comedy Club in Hollywood on Sunset. So I started this night at the comedy store 20 years ago, and black comedians all over have benefited from it, man. And, and the people of L.A. have come out and supported it. People around the country have come out and supported it. And tonight, I'm doing the last show of the year, Club Nokia. There's still a few tickets left, VIP tickets left. we got some Indiana Pacers coming out tonight to the uh, to the show tonight. we got some all-star comedians on the show. Gary Oakley. we got our man Lil Rail from Chicago on the NBC show. got me hosting the show. But it's all at Club Nokia uh, going on at 8 o'clock, man. Doors open at 7. Uh, it's, a, it's a free party where you can come on, get a drink, go on, get a happy hour special. And then a food party. The food party starts at at a ten at a eight o'clock. That goes on the ten, and then so we got the free party, the food party, and the after party, all at Club Nokia for one price. LA Live. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to be deep. Bruh's here, drink oh, and food. Yeah, the bruh's going to definitely be there for that. And, 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 and fellas, we got ladies, and, and ladies, we got 
talent. So it's one good. It's a hell of a time. Done deal. Done deal. Um, when did you know? When did you know that Kobe Bryant was going to be special? Because a lot of people don't remember. He didn't come into the league like LeBron came in. Like LeBron came in no, first didn't. game, triple double. You know what I mean? Kobe had to he had to buy his time a little bit with Nick Van Exo and Eddie Jones and those boys out there, and Rick Fox. He had to buy his time a little bit before he became the the Black Mamba. But, but when did you know that that dude was going to be this dude? I think he became that dude, man. When when he when doing that championship run and Shaq fouled out. And Kobe took over mm. and was cool, calm, and collected. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He took over, and because Shaq had fouled out, and he sealed the deal for us for the game. It was like, okay, I got this big fella. And then again, he showed us again when uh, when he went to the unfortunate, you know, uh, incident in, in Colorado. <laughs> he went through the whole trial thing, and he still put up great yeah. career numbers. Doing that whole stretch. Yeah, that, that dude on the court. That dude was so coming back off a of helicopter, scoring fifty on people. <laughs> that, exactly. <laughs> no man. shoot around. You knew right then he had that. He had that. You know. And plus, when Jordan, Jordan kind of gave him the nod, man. You know, at the same time. So, you know, Jordan. I mean, Jordan may not be a great GM, but <laughs> but but he knows he knows talent when it comes to on the court, man. Yeah. So, I mean, Kobe, Kobe's a special guy, man. Um. They got to retire a Kobe Bryant jersey. Which one do they retire? The twenty four or the eight? You know what? I had the discussion yesterday, man. I think they should retire both of them. Me too. One jersey, <laughs> one jersey, eight on one side, twenty four with a slash of twenty four on the other side of the slash. You got to do both, man, because he won three with number eight. He won. He, he did incredible things with number twenty four. So why not? First in history to have two numbers retired. They retired twenty three and forty five for Jordan. But Kobe Bryant to get number eight and twenty four definitely retired. Yeah, you damn right. That's 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 the most boss player move of all time. You got one dude, now, 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 let me two ask jerseys. Another question. Let me ask you another question though. When they put the statue up, what number they put? Oh, <laughs> oh. Do they, do they, do they put? Do they put? Do they put number eight on his back and then have him hold another twenty four jersey? I think that'd be a, a pretty cool statue. If, you know, he got eight, he got an eight jersey on, and then he holding number eight. Yeah, I mean number yeah. That that's gonna be a tricky one. The statue is gonna be a tricky. I didn't even think about that. The statue is a tricky one. Damn. <laughs> um, earlier this week, uh, KD Kevin Durant, who's become very yeah. a very sensitive young man when it comes to being covered by the media, he says that the media is being has been mean to Kobe Bryant because of Absolutely. you know they are. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I mean, people took shots, man, at Kobe, man. You you see this guy, I mean, you, you kicking a man while he's down. You know what I'm saying? You see what, what he went through. You see what he played through, man, and all the injuries. He still wowed you, you know. He still wowed you and all that good stuff, man. And, and, and basically, you're like, are you kidding me? You're going to kick him while he's down? But that's just, you know, I mean, but writers have to have something to write about. Yeah. That's their job. You're a journalist. So if you go with, the, if you go with what's popular, if you go, if you go with what's popular, then, then, then you're riding. you got to be controversial. It's One Mike with Big Mike. Speaking right now to actor-comedian Guy Tory about his beloved Lakers. Um, do this for me. Rank the, rank the four California NBA teams, one through four. Wow. California <laughs> NBA team? Yeah. you got to go with Golden State, number one. Okay. Of course. And then, you know, you got to go with uh, Clippers, number two. All right. And then, you know what? If you go by record, man, I mean... If you go by record, I mean, you got to go with, 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 you know, Sacramento four, and we got, and, and four, I mean, three, and then us. Got to be, unfortunately, four, man. Dog, did you ever feel like in, at any time in your life you would ever say that? You would ever say no, that the, the Lakers are the worst not. NBA team in the state of California? Absolutely not. But you know what, man? We got we got an organization, man, that hopefully Jeannie will get it together, man, and Jim will step back, man, maybe. And then we'll get we'll get to we'll we'll write this ship, man. I'm not worried about it. We'll nah, write this ship. You, I mean, there's some young talent out there now. The kid, the Russell kid, Julius Randle. Um, well, you got to yeah, do. I love, it. I love I love our roster, man. The the Roy, you, you love it. You love Roy it. Hibbert, you love that. <laughs> yeah, I like Hibbert, man. I ain't gonna front, man. Hibbert. I mean, you know, I, I'm personal because I know him, so you know, I, I, I like him. Okay. <laughs> so, All right. I, mean, I do, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. I mean, I like Roy, man. I mean, you know what? You know what may happen though. With Kobe stepping down, man, like this, right? With Kobe stepping down like this, mm-hmm. and KD, you know, coming up. KD, KD may may talk, may talk Kobe. In the, I mean, you thinking Kobe may may talk Kevin Durant into to coming out to to LA? Uh, that's Guy Tory.
comedian actor. I think we we lost the call for a minute. He must, must have went through a a bad seller. We'll see if we can get him back here in a second because I gotta I gotta ask him about uh, this movie that he he's gonna be in uh, called Happy Hour. Um, he talked a little bit about uh, the Fat Tuesday that he's doing out in L.A. tonight. So if you're you're listening and you're in the L.A. area, you got people out in the L.A. area. Um, give your people a call, man. Let them know. Uh, head out there to Fat Tuesday and, and mess with mess with old guy Tory, man. Um, uh, def- golly, man, so many things I want to ask him about. I want to ask him about the, the L.A. move as far as the uh, the team, you know, the uh, the football team moving from uh, St. Louis to L.A. So hopefully we can get him back here in just a second. Um, but while we do that, while we while we wait and try to get him back, we can go ahead and take a look back into the annals of sports. We can go ahead and do uh, our daily look back. We call it on this day. Now, 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 let's take a look back. Back, 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 back. On this day. On this day. Now, if we get if we get our guy back, we'll, we'll cut it short and then and then pick it back up. But um, we're just gonna keep the show moving, man, and, and see. Make it do what it do. Try to be a professional about this thing. <laughs> uh, on this day in in 1653, damn, we going way back. An athlete from Croydon is reported to have run 20 miles from St. Albans to London in less than 90 minutes. Like, uh, that sounds fast to me. Like, Rob, you guys know my, my, my former partner. I mean, he's my partner. He's still my player partner in the regular life. But, you know, uh, my, my former co-host, I guess I should say. Yeah, that's a better way to say it. He runs a lot. And so 90 minutes for 20 miles. Yeah, that's a that's a grip. Uh, On this day in 1930, the NHL drops to 20 minutes slashing about the head penalty. So I guess you could just run up on a dude and just crack him upside the damn head if you want to. And there's no penalty. (laughs) I don't know. I didn't I didn't research this at all. I just it's the fact. And I'm just telling you guys the fact you know how to use the Google. Have at it. Uh, on this day in 1936, the second ever Heisman Trophy was awarded to Larry Kelly of Yale. Yes, uh, uh, our Ivy League young man took home the second ever Heisman Trophy. On this day in 1963, the New York Jets got their first ever shutout. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs. I believe this is AFL football as well. And uh, they beat them 17 to nothing. On this day in 1964... Houston, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what this even means. Houston Colt 45, they changed their names. Oh, the Houston Colt 45s were their names. They changed their names to the Astros. On this day in 1967, uh, Wilt Chamberlain set the NBA record for 22. Yeah. Um, all right, let me cut this short. Let me cut the, uh, the on this day short, and we'll get back to it here in just a second as we bring back guy Tori. i don't know guy. i guess you kind of went through a bad cell there or something i'm not sure <laughs> you know man I, I live downtown la man by the staples center man of course so, you, you do. know i gotta keep all my lakers man so the reception downtown isn't the greatest all these buildings frame down here man all right well you know what we'll do we'll go ahead and get you up out of here man but i got i, I want to go ahead and get through a couple more uh questions for you that i had um you being a guy from st louis but now taking up residence in L.A., like what? What are your feelings about the team? The move, the, the possible move that the St. Louis Rams could not again become the L.A. Rams. You know, you're from St. Louis, but you live in L.A. Are you kind of torn <laughs> in, in, emotionally with that? I am, man. But you know, they hate me in St. Louis right now because being being you know an L.A. resident now, living here for 23 years, man. I grew up and spent half my other life in St. Louis, man. I want the Rams out here, man. I mean, why not? I live out here. Uh, I can go to every home game rather than fly to the cold weather, you know. I always try, I always, I always try with the most of the West Coast games, so I want the Rams out here, man. No doubt. <laughs> Guess that's solved. Um, tell me about um, – well, first let me ask you this. Are are the 76ers going to get their first win tonight against the L.A. Lakers? Is that going to happen? Man, I hope not, man. And Kobe's, Dude, and Kobe's return man, to wonder- Philly? Man, I hope Kobe go off tonight, man. I don't want the Sixers to win tonight. Not not that first one against us. See, you, I mean, you, you, you're you working in that bubble. I call it the bubble, where fans, they keep their favorite player in these bubbles, and they never want them to change. Right. Yeah, Kobe's Kobe's done, man. And I can't I can't watch a Lakers yeah, game. I mean. I can't, I know, dude. I mean, it's like, I know you see that. You see the day coming, but you don't want it to come. It's like your hairline. 
you know it's gonna go one day. You keep fighting and fighting, but for one day the hairline is gone. You just gotta say, you know what, it's over. So the same thing with women. They they know that boobs gonna sag one day. You know, but they try everything to keep them boobs perky, but they're gonna be taking hands with the gut any minute. So that's how it was with Kobe, man. You know it's gonna happen. You don't want it to happen. And when it does happen, you just gotta say, you know what? It was a good run. No doubt. It, it was so a let hell the hairline run. go, man. Oh, <laughs> Oh, tell me about this. Tell me about this project you got coming out called Happy Hour. Tell us about that. Happy Hour is a movie I did, man. I shot a uh, summer ago, man. So it should be coming out next year, man. A great piece, man. A, a young lady in St. Louis wrote it, directed it. She's used to doing plays. This is her first feature, man. So uh, she asked me to come help out. I kind of directed, helped direct it a little bit because it was the first time using cameras and stuff. So I just gave my expertise and what I know from the movies that I've done, man. And, you know, it's going to be a good project. No doubt. No doubt, man. Um, a lot of a lot of comedians say that their comedy is is born out of out of pain. And you talk about Mike, Mike Epps being uh, ha- having having a story to him. Um, a lot of people. I don't th- I don't know if a lot of people know it. I, I happen to. Um, a friend of mine was was friends with. I, I don't know if it's, if it's, it's his current old lady or uh, former, but. They were friends, and she told me some things about him in the past. But where, where, does your, where does your comedic style come from or your comedic motivation come from? You know, it, you know at first you start emulating who you admire, you know, and, and I'm, I'm a product of Def Comedy Jam. That's what inspired me to do stand-up. And I started studying the greats like Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, and Bill Cosby and all those guys, man. And after a while, you evolve into who you are, man. And I have a no-filter style now. Being in Hollywood, and as you get older, you know, as you get older, you don't have a filter anyway. Your filter comes off. So just you know, I, 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 you know, I, I studied my brother, man. Of course, being inspired by my, by my brother, Jeff mm-hmm. Comedy Channel that old era, Martin Lawrence, Chris Rock, all those guys, man. So you know that my my, my style is kind of, uh, it's kind of evolved into, uh, into just you know me saying what I want to say when I want to say it, how I want to say it, man. I have no filter. Now. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because in, in in the age and time we live in now, like the po- the PC police is strong. And I wanted to know, like, how difficult is that for a comedian? Because I hear a lot of comedians say there's certain places that they won't even go anymore, like college campuses, because everybody wants to be so politically right. correct. You can't say this. My, my theory is this. A joke is a joke. Now, if it's a bad right. joke, it's a bad joke. But a joke right. is still a joke. Funny, funny. Right. And if it's funny, it's funny. And everybody's so damn offended by every damn thing somebody says. And for somebody in your line of work, like, how do you how do you maneuver around that? Well, America, America's getting softer and softer, man. This whole thing with where every kid is a winner, like everybody gets a trophy and all Ridiculous. that Ridiculous. Everybody trying to be politically correct and all that. I, I'm, I'm totally against all that, man. And I'm just like, you know what? If, if, if somebody laughs, somebody laughs. That's all that matters to me. Now, I do have, I do have my, uh, my, my things I stay away from. I don't talk. I don't joke about AIDS. I don't joke about that. I don't joke about cancer, and I don't joke about plus size women, and I don't uh, joke about women, you know, getting sexually abused. Everything else is fair game. Mm-hmm. Who makes you laugh? Like who make not not like the <laughs> that was funny, but like that gut laugh, that that like that real real tears in your eyes laugh. Who who does that to you? Man, you know what? It's just a, it, it's just what's kind of funny. There's there's some comedians. There's people who are not comedians who just say stuff to make me laugh. Man, comedy is that straight line that drops off and you don't see it coming. So I mean, I, I'm you know of course I give the King's comedy to us. I was a big fan of definitely Bernie Mac, Steve Harvey, and Cedric the Entertainer, and DL and those guys. Man, and then. Of course, my brother Martin and Eddie Murphy is just, you know, is just is on a whole other level, man. Because I did when I did uh, Life with Eddie, man, the stuff that he would improv, the stuff that did make the movie, was just as funny or not funnier than than you know the stuff that made the movie, man. Just seeing him take what was on the page and just go and and go in another direction with it. And Kevin Hart has that same gift. I've worked with Kevin as an actor before, and I've seen what was on the page, but I see Kevin's choices, and his choices have been like, wow, okay, that was pretty nice. So. I mean, there's a lot of guys, man, that, that that people may not know, but you know, I'm just a fan of comedy, man. To be honest, how how ridiculous was that damn movie, man? Because I'm talking, it's you, Anthony Anderson, it's uh, Eddie Murphy, it's Bernie Martin, Matt, Bernie. It was, it was Martin. It was, it, it was yeah, man. It was so many funny people on it. Bernie Mac kept everybody in stitches every day on the set. I can I imagine mean, every day. Jesus, I can imagine. That's like, um, no lie, that that dude is my favorite comedian. I don't think. I just don't think the world got enough of him, man. You know what I mean? It's like he, didn't, man. he, he went he went way was, too soon. It was like Robin Harris. Like, yeah. Like we, we weren't ready for either one of them to go. And, yeah. And kind of Robin Harris kind of took Bernie under his wing. So that's why Bernie 
you know, was the comic he was, man, because both from Chicago, they both had that style, they both had no filter, and they both, you know, were great storytellers, man. So, I mean, that's the, Chicago has produced a lot of great comedians anyway, man. There's a lot of them come out of the D.C. area, Chicago area, of course, you know, Cedric Entertainer, St. Louis, my brother. So, yeah, the whole Midwest area, man, because what people don't realize, man, comedians are dark. We're dark on the inside. Mm. And we tell jokes to lighten up those dark areas. And I heard a great saying one time, I can't remember who said it, but we become comedians because we're so afraid of getting laughed at, we start telling jokes to control the laughter. Wow. Wow. Guy Tour just got deep on us, y'all. <laughs> he, Guy Tour just took us there. <laughs> uh, he's comedian actor Guy Tour, by the way, on Twitter at on Twitter and Instagram at G-U-Y-T-O-R-R-Y and on Facebook yes, at Guy Tory Live. Before I let you go, um, damn, I just had a brain fart. What the hell just happened? <laughs> what the hell? What the hell was I about to say to you, man? Oh, uh, well, well, we, oh. why you think of that? Just make sure people get down to LA Live tonight at Club Nokia. One of the hottest comedy shows ever. Fat Tuesday. Still tickets left. Doors open at seven o'clock. Shows at eight. Gary Owens, a man from Check All Star, from Think Like a Man One and Two with Kevin Hart. We also got you know Dean Hardy, up and coming funny comedian touring the country. We got Melanie Camacho, who's what to me one of the queens of comedy. Over from Martin Lawrence, Jamie Foxx, and uh, and and Chris Tucker. And then we also have, you know, Lil Rail on the house from Chicago. He's on a new MC show called uh, um, uh, uh, The Carmichael Show. Another funny guy. That man. is so, awesome. You know, fellas, oh, whoa, whoa. Who here, is, the holiday season, come on out. Lou, is he, is he the, the dude that plays the brother? Yeah. He plays uh, uh, Carmichael's brother, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, and his girl is Tiffany Haddish. Yeah, who yeah, on the show yeah. That dude, is, <laughs> that dude is a damn nut. Like, for those of you who yeah, haven't man. seen The Carmichael Show, you got to check that out. It, and you know what I love about that show? It touches issues. Like I told my old lady the yeah. other day, I was like, well, "Man, if this show if this show lasts three seasons, I'm gonna be surprised because they they they're yeah, not Jerome playing." Carmichael, I think it's I, I think it's a Harold Carmichael was the, was the receiver because I'm in football mode, but it's Gerard Carmichael. Gerard, very funny man, right? Very right. funny. Uh, had a very funny HBO special man that he shot at the comedy store man, but young funny brother man, good writer, good delivered jokes and turned out to be a pretty good actor as well, man. So. It's gonna be a great show tonight, man. What's the next? What's the next evolution for Guy Tory? That's what I was gonna ask. Like, uh, the documentary, man. I'm shooting a documentary on Fat Tuesday, the night that changed the game, man. From Hood to Hollywood, the untold story, man. It's about a night of young, hungry black comedians, man, who wants their voice heard after the Rodney King verdict. And uh, my final question for you. And by the way, I'm talking to Guy Tory. He's at Guy Tory on Twitter and uh, Instagram. Guy Tory live on Facebook. He is an actor and comedian. Uh, doing this event Fat Tuesday tonight at the Nokia Center. So if you got people out in the L.A. area. Club Nokia, yeah. Go ahead. Club Nokia, I'm sorry. Uh, have them go out there and check that out. Um, damn, I did it again. That that sound that you hear, dude, that loud sound and that smell, that's my brain farting, cuz. Cause, cause, um, <laughs> <laughs> what what the hell was I about to say to you, man? I asked you hey, about man. I asked you about the um, the next evolution. Oh, why don't why don't comedies... As we talk about life, why don't comedies get consideration by the Academy? Why is it? I missed the last part. The, the Academy Awards and the Oscars and all that. Why don't oh, comedies yeah. get consideration? You know, comedy, man, comedy is like the low man on the totem pole for some reason. Man. Comedy does not get the respect that it should. Even your own spouse, your own wife or girlfriend don't think it's a real job. Damn. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I was married, it was like when I changed, it's like, oh, you going, you going to the club to, to hang out? No, it's a job. You get on stage in front of thousands or hundreds and try to be funny. So people don't look at it as a real job, but it's it's, it's a job. It's it's it's, it's, it's probably the basics. We have no band and no backup singing. You know, you tell the same joke twice. People people want to get mad at you, but if you if you sing the same song, they want to hear it over and over again. Mm. So for some reason, comedy is 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 a low metal totem pole, but it's the most pure, pure form. In the Once again, ladies and gentlemen, he's got to a guy. I appreciate. You taking the time out to talk to us tonight, man. Hope I hope your event breaks just breaks the doors down tonight, man. I know you got a bunch of funny people out there, yourself included, man. Uh, have fun, not too much, of course. You know we're we're adults now, but yeah, have a lot of fun, man. And I appreciate you taking the time out to join me tonight, man. I appreciate you, man. Like, we got to do it more often, man. It's definitely, definitely. Far, far too long and, and far too less too too many times not doing it. My man, my man. Have a good one, brother. All right, bro. He's got Tory, everyone. Make sure you guys, once again, follow him on Twitter and Instagram at G-U-Y-T-O-R-R-Y and on Facebook, 
Guy Tory Live. He's going to be at uh, Club Nokia tonight for his Fat Tuesday. Got a, got a documentary coming out about that joint as well. So, you guys, when, when it comes out, uh, make sure you check it out and come back. We're going to finish up uh, part two of, <laughs> of, uh, of um, on this day and then move into some of these college football rankings and what happened last week in college football. Um, we'll talk some NBA, Steph Curry. The, uh, the, Atlanta, the Atlanta Hawks, I mean, we got to get into our local news, of course. And we'll do that, all that, coming up next. Hey, Nick Cannon here. So, of course, we all know there's lots of talent in America. But unfortunately, there's something else we've got way too much of. Childhood hunger. 17 million kids struggle with it in this country. But here's the thing. This problem is entirely solvable. Seriously. We already produce more than enough healthy, nutritious food in this country to feed every single last one of those hungry kids. We just need a way to get it to them. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is out there every day gathering surplus food to give hope to hungry kids and their families all across the country. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Together we can solve hunger... Together, we're Feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. One mic. All I need is one mic. What's the name of the show? One mic with Big Mike. You know, ain't nobody getting hurt, anybody. You know, there's no, no crime being committed. And they say his style is too urban for the radio. This is real life stuff that's happened to me. Well, you know what? You, you, and you. One mic with Big Mike. I like to be able to do what I want to do. A sports talk show. But no subject matter is off limits. Meek Mill's concert is not called the Hell Yeah, I Bang Khloe Kardashian concert. And now, your host. Put your hands together for the one, the only, Big Mike. One mic. One hour down, one to go right here on One Mic with Big Mike. Appreciate everybody for joining me. Appreciate my guy, Guy Tory, man, for coming on the show, man. We definitely got to get him on more and more, man. Um, and supporting supporting black comedy, man, and black comics, man. Uh, it is actually a job. At one point, I, I wanted to be a comic. I thought I could be a comic. I um, was a class clown in school, you know. Um, I'm ignorant. I'm, I'm kind of ignorant, but at the same time, informed as well. So I felt like I could do it. But then, you know, I'm always the guy who says... You know, that isn't as easy as that guy is making it look. You know what I mean? And I, and I always have that part. Like, that's the attitude I had when I got into broadcasting, which is what caused me to ask so many questions. And it allowed me to meet some very good people in this business and re- and humble myself. I mean, we all know people who step into a job and you know, they know every damn thing already. Every time you're trying to tell them something, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know, they I know person. I, I was never like that. And I'm never like that. You know, I'm... I'm I, you know, this is that's my area of humility. When I see somebody doing something that I, that I don't do or can't do, I'm, I'm always curious and, and I want to know the process to it. Because most things that, that people perfect, there, there's a process to it. You know what I mean? And the good ones have met the, the Eddie Murphys of the world and the Richard Pryors of the world and the Martin Lawrence's of the world have mastered the process when it comes to uh, stand up comedy. You know what I mean? If you're if you're 30 plus probably you you know about the deaf comedy jam days guy tory was was mentioning you know what i mean uh friday nights you 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 congregate over somebody's house i probably was what 17 18 at the time uh, i still have a tape around here as a matter of fact i have a huh, there's a vhs tape around my house somewhere in some box of just just hours as many hours as can fit on a vhs tape i'm not sure anymore how many that is but of Deaf comedy jam. You can see like Mike Epps like killing some dude for having a cowboy hat, a leather vest on, and some tennis shoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um Chris Tucker, Bernie Mac, uh uh Joe Torrey hosting that joint, Martin Lawrence hosting the joint. You know, all these people, man, Steve Harvey is not even a comedian no more. He he's a damn self help author, T V host or whatever, game show host. Yeah, that dude was a stand up comic, man. You know, but for those of you who don't know, you know, and he started, you know, on a stage, Russell Simmons, man, is the guy who, who created Def Comedy Jam 
and started the careers of a lot of people, man, who you see on television right now. Like everybody loves um, J.B. Smooth, right? People think that uh, Larry David discovered that dude or or Tracy Morgan, you know, you know, Tina Fey must have discovered this dude. No, Martin Lawrence did step your game up. It's real, you know, and, you know, and. Guys have been grinding, guys grind and grind and grind at, at comedy for so long. This kid, Jared Carmichael, I never knew who he was till I saw him on that movie Neighbors with, with uh, Zach, with this kid's name, Zach Efron. Yeah, uh, he was the obligatory black guy in the group. And then I saw him do this stand up, the one that uh, that guy was just referring to in the, during the interview. And I was like, this dude is funny as hell. And Part of the reason I felt, felt like he was so funny because he said so many of the things that that I say, like almost verbatim. My old lady's watching it, like, but you say that kind of stuff, which again gave me like that feeling, like, man, maybe I could do this. But uh, you know, I've hosted shows and and events and stuff before and made people laugh. But to to stand in front of people, you and a microphone, for an hour, and the job is for these people to laugh. Like I always feel like I'd be the person if it's like fifty people in the room. I'd be focused on like the three people that's not laughing. <laughs> like, what the hell? What the hell's wrong with them? Are they deaf? They can't hear me. And it'll just throw my whole game off. You know what I mean? It just throw me all the way off. Um, so, you know, that's that. Anyway, back to one mic with Big Mike, Spreaker.com and the Spreaker app. Make sure you guys download it or log on. Sign up for your free Spreaker account. And once you do that, uh, find my show, the number one, M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Uh, follow me and, you know, listen to the show. They're all posted. The previous ones, this one, of course, is being live, but it will be posted following the show. So you guys can download it or stream it. Uh, you can stream it from, from SoundCloud, from YouTube, from the Spreaker site itself, uh, working on getting this iHeartRadio thing jumping off. I want to be everywhere you are, as Michael Jackson would say. I'm also on Facebook. Still trying to figure this whole Facebook thing out, man. Uh, Facebook.com backslash O-N-E-M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G. M I K E. All right. Uh, I said before, before we got, you no, know, I got disconnected from Guy Tory, so I had to get him back. But in the meanwhile, what I was doing was on this day. So, what we'll do here, we'll kind of reboot and just pick up on this day where we left off. But I got to actually drop the intro first. Now, 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 let's take a look back. Back, 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 back. On this day. On this day. All right. On this day, take two. On this day, I had to do on this day twice. Or not twice, but I had to discontinue it. Anyway, starting over here. On this day in 1967, Wilt Chamberlain set an NBA record of 22 free throws missed. He was 8 of 30 from the line. Why is this important, ladies and gentlemen? Because I guess DeAndre Jordan wanted to pay homage to Wilt. Not really, but let's just say that for, you know... For, for whatever sakes. Yeah, this dude missed 22 free throws. A professional basketball player missed 22 free throws in a, in a b- basketball game last night. DeAndre Jordan did. Almost a year to the day after one of the greatest players in, ba- in, in NBA history, Will Chamberlain, did it. But here's the thing. There, there's too many specialists and coaches and, I don't know, free throw whisperers and all these people. There's too many of these people out here for you to be that bad, cuz. You know what I mean? It's just too much. And inevitably, you're hurting your team. Like, if you hit half of those, that's 11 points, man. It's like, you got to get... I mean, I like DeAndre Jordan, too. I, I love the way DeAndre Jordan plays the plays the, bas- plays the game of basketball. But I can't... Like, I can't deal with that. I can't deal with, you know, people not being professional about about the, 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 the work. Um... Moving on. On this day in 1971, the Cubs released Ernie Banks, but then they signed him as a coach. So win-win, I guess, or lose-win. Um, Ernie Banks had a nickname, I think, and he was famous for saying, you know, great day to play two or something crazy like that. It's a baseball thing. Don't, don't expect me to know. On this day in 1973, Jack Nicholas became the first golfer to earn $2 million in a year. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Jordan Speed made that like right now <laughs> like he just made two million dollars right now um speaking of golf uh there's, there's people who are who are insinuating that tiger woods is is, is is done playing golf 
the, the sport that you can play till you're like 90, people are kind of insinuating that he had a press conference today and speaking in the past tense a lot and all this kind of stuff and saying how, you know, he ain't rushing back no more. He's walking as rehab. <laughs> okay. You know, and for what it's worth, man, whatever, dude. Tiger gave it to him. He gave golf everything. Like everything golf has now, a lot of it they owe to Tiger Woods. So screw you. Uh, on this day in 1988, uh, NBA, NBC, excuse me, bids a record $401 million to capture the rights to the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. Um, on this day in 2002, ATL, stand up. Um, Mike Vick ran for 173 yards in the game against the Minnesota Vikings. You know, people here, everyone probably knows this game. You know, the go Mike Vick, the overtime game where Mike Vick just runs straight through the, the Vikings defense. Could have used that last week, huh, Falcons fans? Yeah, I know. Um, but that was the most since the merger, since the AFL-NFL merger, breaking the record of Bobby Douglas of uh, 127 yards. If you want to know about Bobby Douglas, look it up. Look, I'll tell you this. Bobby Douglas, every year he showed up to, 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 to training camp, they begged this dude to switch positions because he couldn't throw the ball worth crap. <laughs> I, always been, I always remind people of that. Every time they talk about quarterback rushing records that Mike Vick broke, it was this dude. He was terrible at playing quarterback. <laughs> and uh, on this day in 2012, for the 21st SEC championship game, number two Alabama beat number three Georgia. Yes, 32 to 28. You know, the game that everybody says, we were just one yard away. Meanwhile, I think, what was it? Trent Richardson was running for 900 yards in the ball game or something. You weren't close. <laughs> you weren't close, Georgia. And uh, I think that's as close as they've been in the last couple of years. And as we all know, Mark Rick bit the bullet. Um, you know what? I have a special addition to, to, to on this day. I'll, go, I'll cut the music for this because this has nothing to do with sports. Um, 60 years ago today, Rosa Parks. Um, it was the day she was arrested for not giving up her seat on a Birmingham bus to a white passenger, which at that time, you know, Jim Crow said, that's the law darkies. When a white man gets on this bus, you get up and take your butt to the back and you give him your seat. Even if it's a woman, we don't discriminate, but well, I guess you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but you know, every time I hear the Rosa Parks story, I'm reminded that everything that you see isn't always what actually is, you know what I mean? Or things aren't always as they appear. Um, to many people, the name Claudette Colvin doesn't necessarily ring a bell. You know, it's not something that, that gets taught in history classes. Outcast didn't make no song about Claudette. But in fact, nine months before, on uh, March 2nd, 1955, a young 15 year old girl, black girl, Named Claudette Colvin. She told a white man, you must be out your damn mind. I paid my money for this ticket and I'm sitting in this damn seat. And as was customary, uh, the police boarded the bus, threw her school books everywhere, put handcuffs on her and took her to jail. Yes, this is what happened. Uh, you may not have heard about this. Uh, one reason she was 15. We'll get to the other reason here in a second or the other reasons here in a second. Um, she said she she attributes the fact that she was so militant at such a young age to the fact that it was, quote unquote, Negro History Month. <laughs> it's not that anymore, but uh, I wish it was, to be honest with you. <laughs> I wish it was Negro History Month still. But it wasn't. But anyway, in, 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 in school, which was still segregated at the time, they were learning about all these injustices and they were learning about all these brave people like Harriet Tubman and, and how she freed so many slaves and sojourned the truth or whatever. So this young lady, uh, you know, little Miss Colvin was like, you know what? You damn right. I need to do my part. So, um, she, she, she pulled, I guess she pulled the Rosa Parks before Rosa Parks. Uh, I found this very interesting. And and I guess after hearing it, it, it fits the time. But it's like those things like we all know about not being able to sit at the lunch counter or having to sit in the balcony at the movies or having to sit in the back of the bus. We, we know about those things, but 
uh, Miss Colvin says, quote unquote, we couldn't try on clothes. You had to take a brown paper bag and, and draw a diagram of your foot and take it to the store. She goes on to say, can you imagine all of that in my mind? My head was just full of black history. You know, the oppression that we went through. It felt like Sojourner Truth was on one side pushing me down and Harriet Tubman was on the other side pushing me down. I couldn't get up, end quote, which is she's explaining why she stayed in her damn seat. Um, if you want to know more about Miss Claudette Coleman, there's a book about her life. It's called um, Claudette Colvin, Claudette Colvin, excuse me, Twice Towards Justice. Um, now, she ends up talking about in this book why no one has ever heard her story or no one knew about her story at the time it happened. Um, happened in the same city, Birmingham, as, as Rosa Parks. Uh, but she says the NCAA or NCAA, where the hell's my mind? I sound like that lady on, on CNN that did that, but she didn't correct herself. She just kept calling it. She was either calling the NCAA the NAACP or the other way around. Freudian, sorry. Uh, Coleman says the NAACP and all the other black organizations felt that Rosa Parks would be a good, a good icon because, quote unquote, she was an adult. They didn't think teenagers were, would be reliable, end quote. Um, she also says that Rosa Parks had the right look. Quote unquote, her skin texture was the kind that people associate with the middle class. She fit that profile. Like, this is wild stuff, man. You, 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 you have these, uh, I don't want to call them delusions, but you have these, these images of what the civil rights movement was. And everything was on the up and up and every, every injustice was, was, was addressed in the same manner. But no, these folks had strategy too. You know, they had PR strategy, too, just like the stuff that's going on right now. Um, in the midst of all this stuff going on, her going to jail and all this stuff, well, she ended up becoming pregnant, which in 1950, whatever, yeah, teen pregnancy, you're going to put a, a young, black, pregnant woman at the head of a movement. Yeah, it, 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 it essentially, I, I, I essentially feel like the attitude was that, we're killing it before it even starts if we do that. And like I say, for and not like I say, but fortunately for the movement it, in and of itself, Rosa Parks came on, came along nine months later on this particular day in history so that they pretty much had their, the right person. She was actually a secretary at the NAACP, you know, well-spoken woman from what I understand, someone that they could build a movement around. And, you know, eventually Claudette Colvin moved to New York where uh, the problems weren't necessarily the same. You know, Malcolm X was at the forefront of a lot of things, you know, by any means necessary and things like that. And no one, she never ever shared her story with the people she lived around because she didn't think it made a difference. It was, it was going to make a difference because they, they had a totally different mentality in New York than they did in the South and Georgia and Alabama and places like that. So, you know, I always tell you guys, man, like, yeah, I, I'm going to get on here and be silly and talk about sports and, you know, have – you know, try to have hot takes and all this kind of craziness. But when, when things like this come up, I think I feel like it's my duty because you're not going to get this on any other, uh, on any other show, because a lot of people might think it's, it's like sacrilegious. It's one of those things that you shouldn't mention because you're disrespecting Rosa Parks. No one's just, no one's disrespecting Rosa Parks, man. Nah, no one's doing that because the, the work still had to be done. You feel me? But just understand that strategy Strategy was in play, you know, to, to, to allow the movement to be more effective. This is why I'm always so critical of this. Something bad just happened. Let's go march. Okay, what's the damn plan? <laughs> like, wh what's the end game? Wh where are we going? And many, many, many of y'all don't know. All y'all trying to do is be a part of something that you can tweet or you can hashtag and you can wear a T-shirt or a hoodie and walk around with Skittles and all this foolishness. But there's no, there's no end game. And this game ain't that game. It's changed. You know what those people did? What, what, what the whole, the, the whole thing behind the, the, the Rosa Parks uh, keeping her seat on the bus was? They affected the, the establishment financially. So here's the thing. If you're mad about Trayvon Martin, I don't feel that you can be mad about that and call yourself marching and all that and then be fighting somebody on 
on, on, on Black Friday. Or as I saw today, making Walmart two point, what is it, what was it, $25 million in three days on some damn paddle of bell pies? Because that's that's the language the other side, like if, if it's a war that you guys are talking about, the other side speaks in dollars and cents. And while black people continue to be the number one consumers in this country, yeah, nobody, they, they laughing at you. You got them marching and no justice, no peace and all this foolishness, they laughing. Because they getting what they want out the deal. That's that, man. I'm, I'm not going to go, you know, Matt. Oh, my guy Matt's in the chat room. You guys can join him uh, by following One Mike with Big Mike on Spreaker.com and clicking the little thought bubble at the bottom of the screen. Uh, he's chiming in on, on the Rosa Parks situation saying that uh, she was related to somebody. Her dad was in the NCAA. In, <laughs> there I go again. Her dad did not play college basketball. Her dad was in the NAACP as well. Well, he might have played college basketball, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the National what was it? The, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. How about we change that too? Why, like while I'm here, while I'm up on this soapbox, how about we start that movement <laughs> that you stop calling me colored in 2015? How about we do that? You know what I mean? You know, minority people. How about that? The NAAMP. Why don't we do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because as long as as long as you're, the name of your business is antiquated. Uh, <laughs> getting mad at some white dude for saying the n-word probably ain't the thing you want to do because you're letting them call you colored you're letting them take it back take it back to the good old days on that one anyway i'm being silly anyway whatever um this is one mic with big mike big mike here just got through talking to my guy guy tory in the last half hour of the show uh, i want to talk a little bit real quick you know what first let's let's talk locally let's go locally real quick this coming sunday and we'll We'll ease into this a little bit more as uh, the weekend approaches. But the Atlanta Falcons, in English, are going to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And uh, if you look at the standings in in the NFL, the Atlanta Falcons are number seven. Right outside the playoff picture. But right behind them (laughs) is Jameis Winston and those pesky Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So this game, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, would have seemed like ah uh, whatever it's the damn sorry ass bucks well <laughs> you kind of need to win this one just you know kind of saying uh but like i say we'll, we'll we'll ramp up to that as the weekend approaches and you know more information comes out as far as injuries and and th- did that kid that had that great game against the falcons after his brother died the, the linebacker i think he's suspended now for peds like in just totally you know, separate news, but yeah, weird, weird like that. Um, last night, the Hawks had uh, one of those nights. It was the Omni, the old Omni, basically one million N words inside <laughs> because young Jeezy was in the building um, performing at halftime and in post game. But the Hawks took care of business against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, Jeff Teague gave you 25 points. Um, had a nice fourth quarter. You know what I'm going to say about Jeff Teague? Um, the good and the bad. It's like Jeff, he'll play He'll play down the talent, like Darren Williams. Like, he'll play down to that. But then Russell come into town, and, like, Jeff would just elevate his game. And then you, you, you like that part about it, that this dude don't back down from no challenge. But you'd like to see him as so many, you know, people here in Atlanta – Love to love to use this phrase, like have that killer instinct no matter what. You know what I mean? Like I remember Michael Jordan. <laughs> Every time Michael Jordan saw Reggie Theus, like Reggie Theus one, he was a cold spot up shooter, but Reggie was too pretty to play any defense for anybody. <laughs> he wouldn't guard nobody. And Mike was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Let's do that then. <laughs> he getting off the bus with 40 against Reggie Theus every night. Like, you go ahead and just pencil that in. You put the four in, and whatever number after that, you can just fill in after the game. He was going to bust Reggie Miller's ass every time. Not ever take it easy on him. So that when he met met up with dudes like John Starks, and when, when Ron Harper was that dude, the, the same the same mentality was there. I'd love to see that out of Jeff T. Like, like, just when you see a bum-ass point guard across from you, just rail him. 
just rip him a new one every time out because you you see you see he can do it. The first game we really saw Jeff T was in the playoffs some years ago. And I remember talking to him after this, and when we kind of knew that he was for real a for real in, NBA point guard was in Derrick Rose's MVP season, and uh, and uh, Jeff T went possession for possession with that dude in the playoffs that year, and we was like, dang, yeah, there's a point guard here in Atlanta. Yeah, buddy. There is a point guard in Atlanta, but then he still has those ebbs and flows in his game. And it's I don't know if it's just a lack of concentration or intensity when it comes to playing lesser talent, but you just you just, you just love to see him produce in, in the same manner. Not necessarily just even points, man, but have an impact on the game the same way he did last night, helping them to that 106 uh was it 106 100 win or 106 103. Something in that nature. I didn't. I didn't write it on my notes, and my memory is shot. Too many blows to the head. Um, speaking of Russell Westbrook, huh, he did rust things last night. All the good and all the bad in one nice bundle. You know, bad turnovers in in, in the waning seconds of the game. But he's a guy who, when when it looked like the the, the Hawks were going to blow this team out after shooting fifty seven percent in the first quarter, yeah, Russ was like, "That's not happening." And he brought the team back, you know, and, and, and did, like I say, those rust things. But by, by the end of the game, he, he was feeling himself a little bit too much. Some ill-advised threes, uh, turnovers in the paint, things that, you know, uh, he's going to definitely have to clean up. Like, I'm never going to talk about Russell, Russell Westbrook changing his game. Like, some people, like Charles Barkley loves that. He's going to have to do this or that and the other. Nah, just take care of, just take care of the basketball, man. Understand situational basketball, and it's cool. But be you, because that's what that that's what makes you the bad dude that you are. Like I don't like like Barkley's like he needs to throttle that back, slow up. Nope, hundred percent. Cause every time, no, never, no, uh, uh-uh. do you? Because at the end of the day, how many guys are better at that position? How many guys are better? You know, you can make an argument for maybe a handful. And if you're in that company, you're doing something right. You know what I mean? Um, Paul Millsap had 26 points last night, and I had a scary moment in the first uh, in the first half. Serge Ibaka goes for a block at the end of the half and comes down and just like dropped a B right in Paul Millsap's mouth. Um, they came out of halftime after the Jeezy concert, well, the first half of it, and Paul didn't shoot around. He didn't he didn't warm up or anything, man. He just you know I mean he just kinda sat there before the game started. And I'm I'm looking at this. You know what I mean? Because there's been a lot of people catching a lot of fire in the NFL, concussion protocol and that type of situation. So I'm looking at it like, wait a minute, does the NBA not have concussion protocol? You remember last year, Clay Thompson caught one, he caught a brick, and it wasn't until this dude was bleeding out of his ear <laughs> that somebody was like, all right. You know what? <laughs> Maybe something's wrong. That dude, like Steph Curry, the night before that, busts his head wide open on the floor. Back in the game in like five minutes, he was running up and down the hall, and it was like, "All right, you can run. Your head must be cool." <laughs> and they put him back in the game. And then, like two games later, Clay caught a brick, and he's about to go back in the game. It was like, "What's this wet stuff coming out?" Oh, it's blood. <laughs> I think I probably ought to sit down. Then his dad tells the whole story. He's taking him home because, of course, he's concussed. He's taking him home. This dude is vomiting in the in the ride on the way home. So I don't know. I don't know how this is going to play out, but or I don't know how this is going to affect anything. But I think the N- the NBA needs to probably get ahead of this. <laughs> you know, if dudes are getting like molly whopped like that in the mouth and the jaw and stuff. You don't want no problem. You don't want these problems the NFL having. People making movies and all this kind of stuff because you told people it's going to be all right. No, go ahead and get out in front of this, man, and stop playing. This is One Mike with Big Mike. Spreaker.com and the Spreaker app is where I'm being heard. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. Also, you guys can hear the show on uh, Facebook. I'm not Facebook, excuse me, on SoundCloud and YouTube. You can hear it on Facebook after I post it, which I do every night after the game, after the game, after the uh, show's over. I post these shows so that if you don't hear them live, you can download them or stream them from the app or the, the website and uh, tell your friends about them, share them with people. There's little, you know, little link buttons you can share. And I'd appreciate it if you do it. 
So we'll come back with the last half hour of the show. I got to tell you guys about Mark Rick. Get through this NFL stuff real quick. And also uh, the college football rankings are out now. So we'll do all that hopefully in the last half hour of the show. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Attention men under the age of 35. You know what really impresses the ladies? When a guy has a few drinks and later gets pulled over for buzz driving. That could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. There goes let's grab dinner and a movie. Oh, I know. You drive more carefully when you're buzzed. You've proven that hundreds of times. A woman admires that kind of confidence. And you've practiced how to speak if a cop does pull you over. Slowly, clearly, and politely like, good evening, officer. A woman admires that kind of foresight. And what woman doesn't find it adorable that you call it buzzed even though the law calls it drunk? You could kiss $10,000 goodbye, along with any chance of having a girlfriend. Because nothing says, I'm a catch, more than a guy who lives in his parents' basement and calls it my place. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hit the corn. Hit the corn. Hit the corn. Down mm, the low. Uh, uh, hey. Hit the corn. Half hour left here on the Tuesday edition of One Mic with Big Mike. I am, of course, Big Mike. Being heard on Spreaker.com and the Spreaker app. You guys, also make sure you follow me on Spreaker as well as on Twitter and Instagram at the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E one Mike with Big Mike. Also on Facebook.com backslash O N E M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Um, that's my Facebook page. I guess it's different from the profile, so you guys can go ahead and um, like it, share it, invite. I don't know all that stuff. I don't know that Facebook stuff. I'm still trying. I, I think I think my Facebook is broken. I think that's what's happening. Well, so, well, I don't know. I'll figure it out eventually. But you guys can also hear the show on SoundCloud and YouTube as well. Hit the corn. Hit the, uh. Did y'all see Travis Kelsey? I think his name is Travis. Kelsey, the tight end. The white tight end. I have to make sure I mention that. I have to qualify it. Uh, doing the corn. His touchdown dance. I, yeah, I stand up and applaud. Matter of fact, yeah, I didn't get out an applause. That's pretty awesome, dude. Yeah, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if he did it right, but it looked to be like on rhythm. You know, he obviously. I mean, he has more rhythm than I do. I'm just gonna keep that one hundred. So good for him. Um, all right, we got like 26 minutes to get through this real quick. So. <clears throat> As I clear my throat here, the college football playoffs uh, rankings are out. I think these are current. What I'm looking at here, yes, I believe so. Uh, Clemson, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Iowa are your top four. Here's what's interesting now. <laughs> yeah, see, Ohio State is at number six. Which, all right, let's 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 kind of talk this through. Right, North Carolina plays Clemson in the ACC championship. Uh, people are picking that upset, to be honest with you. So if that happens, if Clemson Clemson's, North Carolina will be left at eleven and one. Now they're at number ten. Now do you jump Ohio State, who has no chance of being the Big Ten champion? Do you jump them with a the number ten team in the nation into the top four? Wherever you put it, you probably move Alabama up to one if they beat Florida. Talk about that here in a second. If they beat Florida, right? Oklahoma's in. They're done. Have no championship game. The Big 12 champion is in. Now it's just a matter with them of seeding, actually. You know, they're sitting there at number three now. The the first two seeds in the college football playoffs are gonna get the the games closer to their fan base. 
semifinal games close to their fan base. Um, to by tomorrow, I'll be able to tell you where those games will be played at. I'm, I'm not entirely sure uh, where the semifinal games will be playing at this year. I, I do believe one is here in, in, in Atlanta, uh, but I'm not entirely sure, so I'm not even going to go down that road. Okay, so you got Michigan State. They're going to play Iowa. So one of these two teams, Iowa could end up with one loss, but a bad resume as far as the people in the selection committee are concerned, which is why it took them so long to even get into the top four. Is because people were worried about their resume. All right, well, now they're here. But then they got to play this Michigan State team that's pretty hot. Kind of Cook is back from his injury. Uh, they beat the brakes off of, who was it last week? Penn State last week, the week before that, obviously, the disappointing, well, I guess the disappointing loss by Ohio State, but a very invigorating win by Michigan, Michigan State. Um, they're sitting there at number five. So if they win, they will be a conference champion, which would push them into that top four. Ohio State, they're done. So they're, just, they're waiting on some real foolishness to happen. Um, but right behind them is Stanford. Stanford has two losses, right? One, I still consider pretty a pretty bad loss. Um, I don't even see Northwestern in the top 25 anymore. Yeah, there is no Northwestern in the top 25. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Northwestern is 10-2, so it's not even that bad of a loss. They're 10 and 2 and ranked 14 in the country. That's who um, they took their first L2, Stanford, I mean. Then they're going to see, and then they lost to Oregon two weeks ago, I think, right? Uh, which Oregon's sitting there at 9 and 3. Then there's USC at number 20. At 20. And I think USC's playing. Uh, yeah, USC is going to play Stanford in, in the Pac-12 championship. So they can get another top 25 win against Southern California, who just got their brand new head coach. Let me make sure I say his name right, too. Uh, Clay Helton. He was the interim dude after um, the, the guy who got drunk at the at the, at the the uh, alumni, or not the alumni, the, the booster benefit, and they realized he had a drinking problem because people were talking about he was drunk on the sideline, apparently. Yeah. I can't think of his name right now, but since he got fired, um, Clay Helton has been the interim coach, and they just took the interim off of his title, so now he's the official head coach. Um, real quick, speaking of head coaches, Scott Frost, former Nebraska quarterback uh, in the was he in the nineties, early two thousands. Uh, he is now the head coach of the University of Central Florida, coming from. Uh, being the offensive coordinator at Oregon. So uh, big shot. Them. They, I don't think they won a game this year. So <laughs> there's no way to go but up. And here's the thing. There's some pretty fertile recruiting ground down there in Florida. And we found out from Terrell Troop last week that uh, UCF is either the number one largest campus uh, in the country or number two. Yeah, who knew that? All right. But back to these um, college football rankings. Notre Dame, done, right? problem is with them they've already lost to stanford right they beat the team behind them did they not florida state right so the the big the the big movement in this whole situation could be coming from north carolina who still has a chance to upset clemson right uh florida just lost to florida state so if florida beats (laughs) if they beat alabama let's just kind of play with that for a minute 18 beats number two if you're if you're a fan of the SEC, I would advise you to cover your ears. The second ever college football playoffs would go on and not, I repeat, not include the mighty, 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 mighty Southeastern Conference. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a sad, sad day in the South, boy. <laughs> oh. And and you know crazy things have happened. Have happened. We've seen we've seen Alabama put the ball on the ground. You know, we've seen Alabama give up special t- special teams touchdowns. And this this Florida team, while they don't have an offense to speak of, yeah, they're gonna they they're gonna try to whoop your ass on defense. They're gonna try to do that. It's gonna be a fight. So it, as I say all that, I still expect Derrick Henry, who is, is in my opinion, the uh, he I, I think. With this SEC championship game, he can go ahead and lock up this Heisman Trophy. Um, that that's my feeling as far as that's concerned. Um, another guy I like, 
And I've been talking about him for, for about a month now, maybe a, a little bit over that. This kid Christian McCaffrey, uh, Easy Ed McCaffrey's boy out there in Stanford, um, he, he looks the part. I heard him on the radio this morning on uh, the Dan Patrick show, and Dan Patrick asked him a question that um, that's something I was wondering. He asked him if he was married to that running back position. And the kid gave the, he gave the, you know, PC answer, you know, that I just love playing football. I love to be on the field anywhere the coaches ask me to be. But if you look at him, yeah, he fits the mold of the, my, one of my new favorite position, the little, the little white slot receiver that no one can seem to cover. Yeah, he fits that mold. He catches the ball extremely well. He, he's the, the epitome of an all purpose back. And I don't think he's that fast either. Um, he, he mentioned that the last time he ran a 40, uh, he was like 4 or 5, like on a hand clock. So, which means he's probably a 4, 6, 4, 7 dude on a, uh, on a, uh, electronic timing. But he, he's, he's herky jerky and he's quick. He has that, that small space quickness. So, yeah, if, if, yeah, if you want to make some money, tell these people you'll be a, a slot receiver. You'll be, you'll be the next Wes Welker or, uh, uh Julian Edelman and these dudes. Cause he mentioned those dudes a couple times in the interview. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, another Heisman Trophy finalist, running back from Ohio State, uh, had a off game two weeks ago against against uh, Michigan State, excuse me, but then came back strong, <laughs> strong last week, uh, two hundred plus yards against uh, the rival Michigan Michigan Ball Club, and I didn't get a chance to talk about this the way I wanted to, and I probably won't have a chance today. After that Michigan State game, when Ezekiel Elliott came out, I was like, yeah, you damn right I'm not coming back to this piece. Like, one, who expected him to? <laughs> he plays running back. His life expectancy is already shorter than a lot of the positions on the field. So the minute he can start making money doing it, real money doing it, <laughs> let me say that, yeah, he's out of here. So the fact that he said it out of his mouth, yeah, calm down. And then the fact that he had an opinion on what went on in the game that he just played in and you people acting like it's, it's, it's the most disrespectful thing in the world, you know, cause that's like saying somebody else shouldn't have carried the ball as much. That's exactly what he's saying. Yeah. He's the best player on the team. He should carry the ball a million times. Derrick Henry. And was it this past game or the game before this? He touched the ball 40 something times. It's a, it's a boy. It's a, it's a kid, but you know what he is? The best player on the football team. So if Ezekiel Elliott touched the ball 11 times, he's pissed about it. He should be. Everyone should be. <laughs> As a fan of football, you should be. When the best player of the team, on the team doesn't get a chance to participate in, in, the, in the football game, yeah. And then when the, when the coach gives you an excuse about him being in the hospital with a skin infection, look, obviously he was, he was, he was well enough for you to play him. And the game, was, you got five first downs in the ball game. Yeah. If I'm him, I'm pissed too. And – I'm the, I may be in the an extreme minority, but I don't care. He has the right to have an opinion, right? Like all this, all this shut up and play football thing, miss me with it. You know what I mean? Miss me. God, it's just so it's just so stupid. Like, and, and I'm trying to make sure. Like, if you listen to this show, just I'm not gonna be the one to make you smart because I'm not smart enough to make you smart. But I'm I'm hopefully I'm not gonna make you any dumber. You know? That's I don't know. Ridiculous. Um, then there's Baker Mayfield, the kid out of Oklahoma, who um, we're looking at Bob Stoops again in the playoffs. Well, not again, but we're looking at Bob Stoops at a chance to win the uh, national championship. Uh, my guy Jason Goff calls him big game, big game Bob, but you know, in an ironic way, <laughs> not because he wins big games, uh, because he seems to uh, fold in those situations a as a coach. So we'll, we'll definitely get a chance to see this year because. He's done playing. He's in. You know, Oklahoma is in. They're, I don't see any scenario in which they get passed up. They they pass all the criteria. Uh, Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame screwed anyway because they just lost to to Stanford. So I'm sorry. Notre Dame would have been in play a little bit and had maybe some sort of gripe. But the thing that's gonna hurt them is they're not in the conference, so they can't be a conference champion. And with that being the case, probably need to be undefeated. You probably need to have lost no games, especially when so many other teams. And teams that will be conference champions, like Stanford, will have two losses. You know, and it's quite uh, – I heard Danny Cannell say today, he said the, the, 
the committee has already shown you that losses don't detract them from what they see on the football field because there's there's situations where um like in this situation Iowa is an undefeated team and there are two one loss teams above them so apparently losses don't really mean as much all right so moving on um I think I have some more college football stuff god this time just flies by on me um I already talked oh yesterday we kind of made we made uh mention of this a little bit that there's too many damn bowl games and the smart people have been saying this for a while now but now those chickens have definitely come home to roost i couldn't even think of this that that that, that saying yesterday the chickens have come home to roost yeah because now you got a bunch of bum ass teams these five and seven squads that they're gonna have to they're gonna force them into these bowl games missouri's already said screw you we're not going and here's the other thing that came up today in this situation the um a lot of these coaches they have bowl bonuses in their contracts so even though your squad is terrible and you've done a crap job of coaching your school gotta pay you because you're going to a bowl game don't you love america and i call that white winning or no it's all right that's white losing and white losing is different than black losing. Like black losing is like 20 years for a dime bag. <laughs> like white losing is like Robert Dirtz. I can like kill and cut up my roommate. And the jury is like, well, maybe he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. He can go free. Yeah. That's what white people, that's how white people lose. Like, like what's that dude's name? The the dude that used to own the, uh, the Clippers. Yeah. He white lost, right? He lost his team. But in place of that, he got two billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, why I wiped this Denzel from Glory tear in his in his honor off my face. Ridiculous. Um, so anyway, they're gonna go by APR. Another thing I was trying to <laughs> trying to think of yesterday. Um, and now I gotta tell you what it means, right? Um, according to CBS Sports, it has been determined that five and seven teams will be given bowl opportunities based on their academic progress rates, meaning. You know, how many people are anticipated or players are anticipated to, to graduate, um, bringing the total of eligible bowl teams to 80 or 81, which still there is a quandary there because 81, one is an odd number and it's too many. So what they're going to do is just leave it up to the bowl selection people as to which bad team they want in their bowl game. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, from those teams, Nebraska, they have a uh, 98 point or yeah, 90, 985 APR. They've already committed to some stupid bowl. Uh, then there's Kansas State, Minnesota, San Jose State, Illinois, and Rice are the teams that are in contention for bowl game, for the bad bowl games, the toilet bowls is what I'll call them. Yeah, that's where they're going to be playing, the toilet bowls. Uh, Missouri has bowed out, like I already mentioned, so – they they're not included in this uh this list I just mentioned. Um sweet. Moving on to the NFL. Last night, shame on anyone, Matt, including you, who sat around and watched that bad game. God, you know what I was doing when that game was on? Um I was watching the, the the Hawks, the Atlanta Hawks play uh two good basketball teams instead of watching two bad football teams. Yeah, I chose the basketball basketball guys. And then yeah, I had some DVR to catch up on. <laughs> Fargo, if you don't watch that, shame on you. It's two seasons so far. Season finale is next, next week. Awesome. That's an awesome show, guys. Um, Bokeem Woodbine's in it, too, for, you know, just to kind of <laughs> – I don't know why I said that. Because I, I, guess, I guess my feeling is if I, if I mention a black actor that people know, um, <laughs> they'll, they'll check it out if they haven't. Sorry. <laughs> that was me underestimating you guys. Um, all right, the NFL. First thing, first things first, before I talk about any games, anything, Devin Steele. Uh, if you know, if you don't know who he is, he is the form, he's a former player, a uh, Cincinnati Bengals player, defensive lineman whose daughter, uh, Leah, was, was stricken by a, a rare form of cancer. She was in stage four, uh, blastoma, I think is what it is. Um, but they got news today that the, that the baby is, she's not a baby, but. She's a young girl. She's a little girl. She's now cancer free. Um, so that to me, that trumps any any news anytime 
I hear of, of, of things of such. Because I told you guys last year, man, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, kids are kids are awesome, man. Especially like little bitty kids that just, you know, they just want to have fun and be, you know, just joy. Like just kids, just they just exemplify joy to me. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> you're right. You're right, Matt. I forgot because I retired from fantasy football. Uh, apparently, I I know not what of uh, of what I do. So my fantasy team, you know, is pretty much set it and forget it. <laughs> you know, I just kind of like I had what was it last week? When did when did James Winston throw five touchdowns last week? Yeah, he was on my bench. <laughs> exactly. And guess who was in? Guess who was in the game? <laughs> Matty Ice, cause <laughs> Matt Ryan. So yeah. Matt says he had Duke Johnson in one of his leagues, so he had to check him out. I, you know what? I still want to watch. I ought to just, like, check it on, online and see, see what the stats were. I've done that before, as a matter of fact. Like, the, the Chargers were on Monday Night Football one, one day, and I had, like, two of them. I had Melvin. No, I had three, matter of fact. I had uh, Malcolm Floyd, Gordon, and uh, Danny Woodhead. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, I did lose that week. I think that was the, the week I retired, as a matter of fact. Or maybe the week before, but yeah, I just kept up on my phone. Saw Malcolm Floyd had zero points. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, broke his shoulder or whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> you're bad. Like, <laughs> like, I'm a bad dude, but this dude is a, a worse dude. Romo did me dirty last week by breaking <laughs> his damn clavicle. <laughs> See, that's probably the other reason I need to retire because like, I'm not even calling Matt out because I do that and people call me out on it. I was like, how the hell are you going to get a damn concussion and can't play? <laughs> like, that's me, see? Uh, yeah, because it makes me an even worse person than I already am. <laughs> like, I have no regard for anyone's, anyone's bodily health. It's all about them damn points and them touchdowns and them yards. So, yeah, I'm, I'm retired, man. I'm retired, especially especially if fantasy football is going to force me to watch Cleveland and the damn <laughs> and the damn Browns. I mean, Cleveland and the Ravens. Yeah, I'm good. I, I'm watching Fargo and and DVR Drugs Inc. Because <laughs> like I just be telling y'all my my bad TV choices, man. Yeah, and as he mad, like money's on the line. That's the other thing, too. I can't do that. That's why I stopped that a, a, a couple years back. I played free fantasy football. Like, I used to put that money in the pot, and then it was like, man, please. Nah. I used to play with White Cats, too, when I was when I was working at 680. And, yeah, just, nah. I felt like I felt like the dude on the, on the Chappelle show. I just wanted to rob the dice game and <laughs> leave them there standing there. I didn't because I might be trying to get a job back over there. Strike that from the record. I never said it. Um, let me see. NFL stuff. All right, nothing. I've already gone through all this stuff, to be honest with you. Other than the fact that, yeah, the police want to take their guns. These, uh, not undercover, off-duty policemen. They want to take, live free or die. What is that? Is it the James, the James Bond movie? Or no, that's the that's the National Geographic thing. I have seen that. I have seen that where they just live out in the woods and have to survive. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, dog. I got. I'm with you, dude. Like my TV watching is all over the damn place. You know. Um, but no, these off-duty policemen, they've written a letter to the N- NFL saying that they need to have their guns in the damn. Uh, in the stadium at the games because they're going to fight off terrorism like the way, you know, because if they had their guns, that stuff in Paris wouldn't have happened. Wait a minute. I may be mistaken. I'm glad Matt's here because Matt keeps up with this stuff, too. But if I'm not mistaken, at the soccer game, was it not a bomb? They shot up the theater, but they let a bomb off at, at the soccer game. So what the hell is your pistol going to do against a damn pipe bomb or whatever it was? An explosive. Yeah, man. Somebody tell these rednecks, man, that just looking for an excuse to have your damn, you know, your hunting rifle with you at all times. Stop using other people's tragedy for that. Idiots. You know, because all you're going to do, you go into the game, you're going to get hammered. Some dude from the other team is going to talk junk to you because you're off duty and then you're going to shoot him. I'm good. You're the damn terrorist, Jethro. 
Yeah. Miss me. Like all this old, you know, all this old f- this 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 fear mongering that happens in America. You can miss me with that cuz I'm from Decatur. I, I don't have time for none of it. You know what I mean? Like let it be what it is. I don't have time for none of you idiots talking about, yeah, if I had my gun during that school shooting, it would have turned out different. Shut up. Jim Bob. Uh quickly, we got under five minutes left, man. I'm talking about these crazy rednecks. Um Kobe and the Lakers are taking on the 76ers today. Uh, interesting. <laughs> Kobe's going home. The Sixers are still looking for their first win of the season. Again, we're almost a quarter of the way through the season. These dudes ain't smell. Well, they have, they smell the win, but you know, it just hasn't come through. Um, they're expecting it to be sold out. See, that's the kind of, I was talking to DJ Shockley about that yesterday. It's like, what are you, what is, what's happening? Is, is, is it like the panda dying at the zoo? So everybody wants to run and see it before it actually dies. Like you ain't like Kobe ain't going to give you nothing that especially that you can't get on TV. Like I'm definitely, if I'm in Philly, I'm never giving them my money. Not, not what's going on in that organization. You ain't getting not a dime from me. I don't care. I don't even know if you tell me like Jesus is going to be on the team, on the team that the, the Sixers are playing against. Mm-mm. I'm going to have to watch, I'm going to have to watch the, the, the Messiah on TV because on NBA TV or something league pass. Yeah, miss me with that. No, 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 no. But people are stupid, and people who people who have a lot of money tend to take advantage of people who are stupid with their money. So go right ahead. Um, the Jaleel Okafor thing. That's crazy, man. Uh, this kid's in a, he's in a terrible situation. You know, and for everybody, it's like, he needs to grow up. Well, you know what, he will. But right now, he's a boy. <laughs> the kid is 19 years old. He, he need to grow up. Look, man, I can only imagine that if I was 19 in Philly and this was going on and I don't know what losing is, yeah, I'd probably do some stupid stuff too. Like, I'm not the dude that calls it mistakes. They're not mistakes. You don't do 108 on a bridge by accident. I mean, you don't sock a dude in his damn eye outside a club like, oops. No, no, these ain't mistakes. You know, but I can imagine the kid being frustrated. I can definitely imagine that being the case. Yeah, man, this team sucks, man, and they don't even want to be. It, it, it seems like they don't want to be better. So he's he's going out and making poor choices, man. And the fact, like they they talking about this dude was trying to get into the club with a fake ID. Strangely, it's not the club that he got caught fighting in. Like, what the hell, Jaleel Okafor need with a with a fake ID? He's Jaleel. He's the third overall pick or second or whatever he was in the draft. Nah, <laughs> he can probably stuff you know, a hundy in, in the bouncer's shirt and get on in the VIP real quick. Yeah, but anyway, I, I bring that up to say that he, he denied that whole foolishness about him having a fake ID. He denied it, you know, and I'm I'm kind of obligated to believe him because he's the same dude that he didn't, he didn't do the, the Johnny Manziel, I'm not going to talk about it. When it came to the fight, he was like, yo, poor decision on my part. Shouldn't have done it. Like he was real upfront about the, the stuff that he's done. So when he says he didn't do this other thing, this minor thing, I'm kind of obligated to believe him. You know, that it, it didn't happen. It didn't go down that way. Um, finally, before we get out here last minute, Steph Curry still doing, still being ignorant, you know, still being just being real stupid with the shot, man. Just real, real dumb with it. Killing folks. Um, he's hit 77, three, he hit 77, three pointers in the month of November. Breaking his own record of 75, by the way. Um, and apparently the Utah media was mad as hell at him and and Draymond because they were uh, they were sitting in the locker room and the, the Utah Jazz postgame show came on and some caller called and it was like, the Jazz played like champions tonight. And Steph, <laughs> Steph and Draymond started laughing. And then Draymond, because he's Draymond Green, was like, F that, cuz. <laughs> and then people got... If people got freaking, you know, pissed about it, like they were disrespectful to the Jazz. No, you're disrespectful to yourself. Win the game. Like if you lose, I can do what I want to do. I gotta shake your hand. I ain't gotta be classy about it. I can be an a-hole if I'm that damn good. Quarter of the way through the season, ladies and gentlemen, and ain't lost a game. Deal with it, suckers. 
anyway that's gonna do it for me tonight man thank you guys for joining me thanking uh god tory for joining me tonight man he's always awesome man and like he said i, I definitely got to get him on uh more as the show progresses I'm trying to get him to realize i just started this a month ago by the way too tomorrow marks the for first month of one mic with big mike man so i appreciate everyone we will come back try to do it better tomorrow if i can and if i can't eh. <laughs> eh, whatever you guys take it easy man <laughs>